Hey, what's up guys? Tim here again. And today I've got a sort of sharpening overview slash demo for you today. And I realized uh, my last sharpening demo, I wasn't uh, exactly that informative on the sharpening process. So I just want to do another one and give you guys a few more tips along the way. So again, this will be a lot more for the beginners, uh, those who are just getting into freehand sharpening. So yeah, this is freehand sharpening my way. So today I am sharpening my San Remu Mini Sambenza, as I like to call it. And what I will be starting out with is a uh, whetstone. This is a sort of cheaper whetstone. Uh, it's got a coarse side, medium side. And then I'll be moving on to the Japanese water stone. Again, also um, coarse. Not really, not really coarser side, but uh, it's got a very fine and a fine side. And I'll be moving on to my ceramic stone, and then I'll fin be finishing it off with my leather strop. All right, so I will talk with you a bit along the way, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get started on my coarse stone. Uh, this whetstone has been soaked. Uh, with this type of stone, you don't have to do that. I personally just do it out of practice. Uh, that's how I started. And I personally find that when you just put a bit of water on the surface, I find the particles tend to just float on the surface and your stone doesn't get as clogged as easily. But obviously you can uh, sharpen it dry if you want. So uh, I'm just gonna find my bevel and you can do, you usually do this just by feel. Uh, if you're starting out though, a tip I can give you is just to take a permanent marker and just sort of put a mark here or there on the bevel. And that way you can see if you are hitting the entire surface of the bevel. Uh, I saw Jay Davis do this, it's pretty cool. And you don't have to do, do this, but uh, it helps when you're starting out, or you could just look at the scratch pattern um, on the bevel of the knife, and that way you'll be able to tell if you are hitting your entire bevel. So I'm just going to do a few quick passes here. You don't have to use one hand. Some people like to put two hands; they feel more control. But if I'm usually when I'm using a small knife or sharpening a small knife, I will just. Uh, Use one hand. Usually after about 10 passes, you'll find that you'll start to develop a burr. That's usually when um, you can switch to the other side. That's You don't have to do it that way, but that's how I've done it. So I'm just going to keep going until I form that burr. I'm going to look at my edge. I'm not really hitting the full bevel yet. So I can see some of the red is still there. So I'm just going to keep going. So guys, I've switched to the uh, the other side of the bevel now, and you'll notice I'm I'm not lifting up uh, the blade after each pass. I'm just letting it rest on the stone. So this is a different way, of, it's just another way of doing it, um, and it helps in that you don't have to reset your bevel every time you lift this, the knife off the stone. So after doing one pass, rather than lifting the knife off the stone, I'm just going to rest it on the stone. I'm not really pressing down hard, and then I'm just going to bring it back like that. And uh, yeah, don't, don't uh, roll the tip of your knife off the stone because that will uh, dull the tip for sure. Alright, so I'm just going to keep going until the scratch pattern on the bevel is completely even and I know I fully hit uh, the entire bevel. Alright guys, I switched the angle of the stone just because it was kind of awkward to work around the camera. And I just realized I didn't show the initial sharpness test, but uh, trust me, this knife was as dull as a butter knife because uh, I had just stone washed a blade and it was, yeah, zero cutting uh, performance. So uh, another tip I want to give you guys is if you know if you look at the bevel of your blade and you notice that one area isn't getting hit as much I mean you can feel free to just you know 
focused on that one area by doing something like this. Um, as long as you keep that bevel consistent, that's all that really matters. But usually after I do something like that, I'll just give it one last pass over like that just to keep everything as consistent as possible. So at this point, I feel as if I'm pretty much there. I can see the scratch pattern is really uniform on the bevel. So how do you know when to move on to the next grit? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, general rule of thumb is get the knife as sharp as possible uh, with this grit before moving on. Okay guys, I'm moving on to my medium grit. And as you can see, I've gotten it pretty decently sharp with the uh, coarse stone. So another tip for just checking the, sh uh, the sharpness is just by taking the uh, the weight, just the weight of the blade, and just sort of resting it on your fingernail. And if it catches, you can tell that you've got a pretty good edge on there. And check, like, you know, all edges of, I mean, all sections of the blade, just run it along. And if you want to figure, figure, uh, figure out if you have any sort of dings or nicks in your blade, you just run your fingernail up the cutting edge carefully of course and uh, you'll be able to tell if you have any uh, dings or chips in your blade obviously at this point I don't because of uh, the use of the coarse side so with a medium grain I'm just gonna or medium grit rather I'm just gonna do the same thing find my bevel uh, do a bunch of passes till I get a burr switch the other side get it as sharp as possible All right, guys, done with the core stone. So at that point, when you're finished with the core stone, um, I mean, the medium grit on the core stone, you could stop there. It's, you know, if you don't have any more, uh, another sharpening stone after that, it's fine. I mean, uh, at this point, it's got it's got a very toothy working edge, and it'll, it'll cut fine. However, if you want to get your knife, you know, a lot sharper, you'll have to progress up the grits and get that edge even finer. So, as I mentioned, this is a Japanese water stone, and it being a water stone, it must be soaked. Uh, you cannot use a stone dry. And one tip about working with water stones I can give you is uh, you can get a lot of good feedback, uh, as in you'll know if you're hitting the bevel or not, just by feel and the sound. And also, you should be very careful, uh, well, be a bit more careful uh, when using a water stone because if your angle is too steep you can actually cut into the stone and damage it and your surface of the stone will not be even anymore. So again same thing find the bevel and do passes until at this point you probably won't get a burr that quickly so just keep your passes even as in you know whatever you do to one side of the bevel make sure you try to at least keep it consistent and do the same amount to the other side. All right, so again, I'm just gonna do the same thing over again and get it as sharp as I can before I move on to the next grit. All right, guys, I just finished with the red side of the jet water stone and that side was about the 1000 grit. So this side here is about 4000 grit. So at this point, the knife is starting to get very sharp uh, you won't be able to push cut at this point, but uh, it still slices through paper very easily. So now with the 4000 grit side, the feedback is much less, it's much more subtle. You won't really hear it, but you will feel it. And you'll know you're doing it right when the, the, the knife just glides along the surface of the stone and you're not really hitting any catches. It'll feel really, really smooth. So again, same thing. Just going to keep going until it's sharp enough. All right, so I'm just finishing up with a few more light passes on the 4,000 grit side of the water stone. So at this point, you will have a the beginnings of a very nicely polished bevel. Uh, it will not be mirror polished uh, because 4,000 isn't really high enough to get the mirror polish. But as you can see in the background, I have a 8,000 grit ceramic stone, and that's what's going to get me closer to the mirror polish. So at this point, the knife is now very, very sharp. Um, yeah. Right, so I'm just about done. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. 
Now, I, I, I didn't have, I don't have the uh, larger Spyderco uh, bench, UHF, whatever, Benchstone. Uh, this is the one I have. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a lot smaller, therefore it's not as easy to work with. But uh, I've learned how to use it or how to work with what I have here. So, again, same thing. Just I'm going to polish my bevel with this uh, 8,000 grit ceramic stone. And it'll be a lot easier to, to make fewer mistakes because the grit is just so fine. Like when you touch this, you can feel how smooth it is. So from there, I'm going to do that, and then I'll move on to the final stage, which is the leather strop. All right, guys, done with the ceramic stone. Now I'm just going to move on to the final step, which is the strop. So if you really want to get your knife, you know, that sort of hair whittling sharp, you, uh, you really need a strop. You can't really get it that sharp without a strop, uh, at least in my experience. Maybe you can with your ceramic stone, but for me, in my experience, I found that uh, my knives go from, you know, pretty sharp to really sharp after stropping. So this is just a homemade strop I've made uh, with an old leather belt, and I just glued it to a piece of wood. And on it is some green honing compound. So just to strop, uh, the way I do it is I just make really, oops, try to do it this way, just really, really light passes, like super, super light passes. And I've heard the more you strop, the sharper it gets. So maybe at least 20 to maybe even 40 passes on each side. Right, so I'm just gonna strop it up really nice. Then we'll do a final cut test. All right, guys, I'm done resharpening, and as you can see, it's got a pretty nice bevel on it now. It's not a perfect mirror polish. Uh, if you, there's a couple, there's like one spot here where you can still sort of see a bit of the uh, factory grind lines, but it's not a big deal to me. Uh, biggest thing is, is it sharp? So let's see. Let's say it's pretty sharp at this point. Alright, so uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video the type of steel that this was, and it is 8CR13 MOV. It's a great steel to practice on. I first learned to sharpen on my Spyderco Tenacious, which has the same steel. It takes a great edge, very easy to resharpen, and yeah, it's great to practice on. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, questions, or whatever, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And for more great videos like this, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you around.